Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about making coins and specifically players that you can be buying right now to make coins in EAFC 24. Whether you have 5,000, 100,000, or a million coins plus, we're going to look through five different trading methods and investing methods today that'll make you coins throughout the rest of the year. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and of course subscribe if you are new now the first thing i want to talk about and the first method of making coins is the most popular for the early game stages on ultimate team and it is called SBC solution trading now it's also a little bit advanced but i'm going to break it down and make it really really easy for you guys just so that you have to look at a couple of players and not have to know how these SBCs work it's all based around the SBCs that come out every single year at the start of ultimate team hybrid nations hybrid leagues and the league and nation hybrid these SBCs are not easy to do they have pretty tough requirements and a lot of people be use footbin because of that, they use the solutions that show up on this website to help them complete the SBCs, and that makes player prices move on the market a lot. We're going to look at hybrid nations. You can look at any of those three SBCs that I just mentioned. You're going to click into that on Footbin and click on the cheapest squad that you see come up at the top. This is what people go on the market and start buying. But you're like, Nate, how do I know which cards do I need to buy? Which cards are going to go up because of this? We'll look at the non-rares, guys. But really, any of the cards in the squad could be moving. What I want to do is look through a card that I know for a fact has moved because I know her fluctuations and I've traded with this card, Chapman. She's got center back, left back positions on her card. Look at this graph. This is what you're looking for for a card to trade with with these SPC solutions. Her price every single day goes from 600 up to 2,000, goes down to 600 again, up to 3,000. Just yesterday, it was a lower day, 500 all the way up to 1,500 two times, and then one time going up to 3,000 coins as well. This is a card that right now shows as 750 coins on the market. But I bet if we go to the market right now, since the SBC was showing as the top cheapest solution, that her price is probably going up on the market right now. It looks like it's slowly starting to go up, right? She's like 900 coins, not 750 like Footbin says, because people are going to Footbin to do this SBC and it's making the price go up because they're going and buying the exact squad they see here and they're buying all these players. Now, I will say this method, you see her prices were spiking a lot more on like Saturday than they were on Sunday as of right now in the early stages. I mean, we're in the early access period, so there's only a limited number of people that are playing this game right now. Once we get on the full game, which is coming out in just a few days, this method is going to heat up once again because there will be so many people going on to this game to complete those SBCs after they get on the game for the first time. So this method may have quieted down just a little bit, but it helped me literally make 500,000 coins in the first couple of days of early access this year. It's going to work great in the next couple of weeks. But also, this method you can use year-round. Every week we get marquee matchups, right? If you're on a low-coin budget, look at marquee matchup solutions every single week, especially those that are for the bronze and silver squads. Because, guys, people will just go in here to Footbin, buy the players that they see on these squads because it's easy and convenient some of these bronze cards will go from 2k to like a thousand coins in 30 or 40 minutes like they have crazy fluctuations just like we looked at with the other sbcs you want to look at the cheapest solutions click through the cards notice which ones move a little bit and then go buy that card while it's low and sell it when it goes up on the fluctuation just like we looked at with Chapman, that gold card. So that is solution trading, guys. It is very big profits. When you have a card that goes from, what did we just see, 500 coins to over 1,000 multiple times per day, right? Look, her price is going up right now. She was just 700 when we just looked. Now, 950. These card prices move fast, and they move really fast really crazy amount so that's number one the solution trading method now number two is a new feature of fc24 that everybody's excited about is evolutions i'm so excited to be taking this bronze mahmood card this is one of the craziest evolutions you can do i'm putting a bronze card into pacey protector which is made for center backs and then i'm going to put him into the golden glow up and he's going to turn into an 84 rated almost hullet gang center mid from a bronze card it's crazy right you can do so many amazing things with evolutions but because evolutions are so crazy everybody wants to buy the best of the best think about it ansu fati or joel matip for that pacey protector evolution a lot of people are buying these cards and you can tell look at their price graphs guys you don't even have to like invest in these like when 
you think they're low, all you have to do is look at the graph and see Matip was 3k yesterday. He went down to 2000 coins. Right now he's 2900, so he's probably up a little bit. But every single day, this Matip card goes from like low uh, 2k range up to about 3k or above. Ansu Fati has been moving every single day as well. A lot of times these cards drop at the content each day 6 p.m uk when we get new sbcs and new packs usually in the store these cards drop a little bit like fati was 7.6k yesterday and now what is he right now prices have been going up a lot so he's 10,000 coins that's almost 3,000 coins per card that you see on this fati card because people are buying him and then putting him into the evolutions now you don't see a big rise like that every single day but what i'm trying to show you is these cards are in constant demand so their price graphs go like this anytime just like we looked at with the sbc cards if you see a price graph that goes up and that goes down multiple times in a daily basis that's a card you want to be trading with and investing in and if you're like nate i don't know what cards people are using for evolutions Go on to foot.gg and click on the Evo Lab up here at the top. This page, after you click on whatever evolution you want to focus on, is insane for recommending players, some of the best players for each of the evolutions as they come out. You see Bonucci, Chiellini with really in inflated pace numbers, right? There's Matip. Matip is one of the most popular cards used in this pacey protector evolution. And you can look through here and see, okay, this card looks really good. Or just like Matip, like that's a Liverpool player. There's a lot of hype for Liverpool players. Who, who doesn't want Matip that's usable, right? When his card has 61 pace, and then if after you evolve him, he goes to 76 pace. So those are the places that I would look to find very meta evolution players, like the Relentless Winger that everybody is doing the Ansu Fati uh, for. There's so many great um, evolutions that you can do and there's so many cards that move every single day on the market because of that so that is investment tip number two um, buy when there's supply that's the one last tip I'd give you in this method like we talked about usually around the content drop each day there's new packs there's SBCs you guys know that every single Thursday we get marquee matchups we get weekend league rewards on Monday mornings we get squad battle rewards on Sundays we get division rivals rewards on Thursdays so usually when we have tradable supply hitting the market that is one of the best times to be going out and buying those specific types of players that'll be moving in price because people are going to go and then turn them into a evolution right it's all about the supply guys buy when there's supply and then sell as the prices go up like Matip right now 3,000 coins boom he's up that'd be a great time to sell him now method number three oh, three is very similar to this one timing the market a little bit but it's really lazy guys this is the lazy listing method this is one of my favorites because all you have to do is buy a card and as long as we're not expecting a market crash or a huge market drop off in the next day or two it's really just you buy the card then you list it up on the market for more coins and you hope to sell it right kamavinga uh it's a card that i know works really really good with this method guys it's simple as this people go on the game and they're buying a card for their team They'll search for Kamavinga on the market. I just searched his lowest price, about 9,000 coins. But when people go to the market and search, they often don't search for the lowest price. They just search Kamavinga and they see, oh, there's one for 9.3K. Oh, there's a 9 point. Oh, there's 11, but it's got an engine chemistry style on it. Let me buy that one. People pay extra for lazy, quick buys that they don't have to try to find the cheapest price for. And they also buy cards with chemistry styles equipped to them. And uh, it used to be position changes, but there's no position changes anymore. So this method, all you do is find a player that people are buying a lot, like Kamavinga. He's French. He's Real Madrid. He's got pretty good stats for a starter card. Like, boom, I'm going to pick this one up because it has a shadow on it. That is one of the most popular chemistry styles to put on this Kamavinga card. And... Uh, it usually makes him sell for a little bit more in the market anyway. I'm going to list this card for 11k, right? I bought it for 9. Realistically, I should be able to sell this for like 9.5k, right? Well, I think I can get a sale at 11,000 coins. It might not sell right away, but that's how this method works. You are just lazy listing, hoping that somebody searches the market right away and sees your card when it's about to expire and sees, oh, this one's got a shadow on it for 11,000 coins, right? If one of these were to sell right now, that'd be a perfect example. This happens all the time with these sorts of cards. And cards like this, Kamavinga, are great to do this with. Focus on players from top clubs, players that are pretty meta, that people are excited about using. And, um, you know, just 
just players that are good, right? Rabio is another one that's one of the best kind of cheaper, but also still really good midfielders in the Serie A. Konate is a French center back. I know I just showed you three uh, French examples. There's, you know, Bruno Guimaraes would be another one that you could do this with really well. He's one that I have done it with because he's one of the most popular budget center mids as a box to box in the Premier League in this game. I think he's like 7,000 coins. Yeah, so like if I saw Bruno Guimaraes come up, try to get a snipe, of course. It helps a little bit to get a snipe. And, you know, maybe you check the footbin graph as well. Like for Bruno, you know, you don't want to be buying a card like this and then trying to lazy sell it on the day of Thursday where we're going to get marquee matchups. And you see that his price is already up so much. Uh, it, it is today. His price is already up a lot. So I'd be pretty careful with a card, a card like Bruno since his price is already going up. But again, the best time to probably do this would be buying around the content drop. Like yesterday, if I would have bought Bruno Guimaraes at the content drop, I could have paid 6.1K. If I would have bought him on Saturday, could have bought him for 6,000 coins flat. And now his, his price has really stayed the same. But over time, if I'm listing every single hour each day, I'll probably be able to get multiple sales per day. Like if I have five Bruno Guimaraes cards and I'm listing them constantly every single day, I'll probably get two or three of them to sell um, in a couple hours worth just because people buy cards and they're lazy. That is lazy listing. Method number three, it's as simple as that. Buy the card. Make sure you get a chem style on it, right? The chem style is the key part because it makes the card just look a little bit better when it's expiring there and people are lazy buying them. Now, that also runs me into number four trading method, the fourth trading method, which is chemistry style trading. Um, and this is a very, very, very popular one, guys. This is one that's been around for ages. And, you know, with hunters and shadows, at least at the moment, not being crazy expensive, I do believe, um, it doesn't work the best when those aren't there. But this kind of goes hand in hand with the lazy listing method. If I were to buy Rabio for, let's see, like 9.5 thousand coins, um, what does he sell for with a shadow chemistry style applied to his card? If this card sells for like 12K with a shadow, that's a gold mine, okay? I probably doesn't, but it looks like maybe he sells at like 10, 10 to 11,000 coins. Let's see, like 10,500, 10,750. Okay, there's a few. Oh, it reset my search. This is the problem with the menus this year is it resets your um, chemistry on the searches. And the menus are just very buggy in general this year. I'm not a fan. Okay, you can see 10.5K for Rabio, right? There's a couple of them up, but this is sort of like a lazy listing method as well. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to search Rabio either with the shadow or you can search without the shadow and just constantly be refreshing here for undercuts. I would be sitting here and saying, okay, if I can sell Rabio for like 1075 you know, what do we have for tax there? We've got 500 coins of tax on a 10,000 coin sale. So I'm going to try to find a card for like the low 9K range with a chemistry style on it, or I'm going to bid on that card. There's not a lot of profit range here throughout Rabio, so it's not the best example, but you're going to find him with a shadow, ooh, like 9.7. I would make like 500 coins if I sold that at, you know, like 10.750. For, for me, that's not worth it. I would try to find a different player that would have a better budget. Like maybe, I don't know about Konate as my game freezes here and I have to reset it because, you know, menus. Um, if he sells for 6K, but then also sells for like 8K with a shadow pretty consistently, that's a type of chemistry style trade that you're going to want to go for. Guys, this works with informs as well as we go on throughout the year. It works best with the budget tier. So like Hummels, Hummels in form is 26K. Maybe he sells for like 29 or 30K with a shadow. In form chemistry style trading is one of my favorite methods as we go on throughout the year because people love in forms and people want their in forms to be the best in game they possibly can with the chem styles attached to the card. So that is method number four, chemistry style trading. Now, me method number five is going to be investing. And this is a broad one. And I want to talk about a few things with investing. First of all, one that happens every single week. If you are a fan of football and you watch football matches, you're probably figuring out who is playing the best and who is having the best performances every single weekend in the world of real life football, right? Now, this past weekend, Harry Kane had a five goal and assist contribution match. Bayern like won 7-0 and Harry Kane's card is up a ton because people are expecting him to get into team of the week, right? This is an out of packs method as his gold card. This year it is confirmed once again, gold cards go out of packs, even though it was leaked that they would be in packs at the same time as a team of the week. If you look at the gold cards for team of the week one, like Lewandowski, Salah, and Dybala, their prices are crazy expensive. So everybody is investing in a guy like Harry Kane 
in the game time, right? Harry Kane is having a great game. Right after the game is over, his price ends up going from 34K to 46,000 coins as everybody invests and they buy because like, oh my goodness, Harry Kane's going to get an inform. This is going to be a card that goes out of packs this is a great investment, right? The same thing happened with Cancelo. Cancelo scored two goals and uh, Barcelona came back from being down. They won three to two with two late goals on Saturday. His price went from 28K all the way to 35K. And then people realized, wow, this card is still way too cheap on the market for the early game time. He's now up to 50,000 coins on the market for this Cancelo card. So that's what you can do each and every weekend that you're watching actual football matches is just keep an eye on the scores, keep an eye on who is doing well. It works best if it is a card like Cancelo or Harry Kane uh, or Hakimi, right? Hakimi had a goal in a PSG win and Hakimi's price is going up a bunch because he's getting into Team of the Week predictions and people were like, wow, Hakimi's going out of packs. That's a card that a lot of people will want. I need to go invest in Hakimi before he goes even higher when he goes out of packs, right? That is the idea. Now, I will tell you this. If you invest, invested in Cancelo, Hakimi or Harry Kane, it's almost best every single time to sell in the hype, sell early. With these cards, they're going up a bunch. We just looked at the Cancelo, right? He was 28K, now he's 51,000 coins. This would be a card that I would be selling on Tuesday or Wednesday before the Team of the Week even comes out because if they were to not get a Team of the Week card, their price is going to come crashing way back down, maybe in later on stages of the year, lower than where you actually bought the card at. So the safe play is to always sell in the hype, especially if you think, okay, this player had like two goals, but is that like really good enough for a team of the week if you're on the fence about it at all it's always good to sell into the hype but the best time to buy is always while the game is happening so just watch football and see who plays well and if their card if they have a good card in the market you can go out and invest in that as people could get excited for the inform and then also we talk about this investing method every single year it is the consistently best way to make coins throughout the entire year of ultimate team SBC fodder, right? Because EA's already dropping SBCs in this early access time period. You're seeing cards like 88 go up to 19,000 coins after these cards were, I'm pretty sure, like 8K, 8K on Friday. Then they dropped the Kevin De Bruyne SBC. And now these cards are 19,000 coins apiece for the cheapest 88s in the game. Now, I'm not investing in fodder at this very time, but if you start to learn the fluctuations and the prices of these fodder cards, they move up and down all the time. We'll have periods of really good SBC content and we'll have periods of really bad SBC content. And in those good periods, those prices will go up. And in the bad periods, the prices will go down. Guys, also, you can trade with fodder because there's SBCs that are out all the time. You can trade with this stuff every single day in this game. You just have to get on the bids, right? Nobody wants to sit and grind through bids for 84 or 86 rated Parejo for 8,000 coins, right? You might be able to uh, get Parejo on bids each and every single day at like 7K and then sell right away for 8,000 coins because, again, people go and find the cheapest version to get and to put into their SBC because they're wanting to get the SBC done when in reality, you're getting it for cheaper because you are going on the bids, right? Get on bids. That is where coins are made. If you want to grind the menus a bit, it's grindy. And it's yes, it takes time, but that is how you make coins. And that is how you learn the market. And once you learn the market more and more and more, you're going to be able to do more and bigger and better things and make more coins on this game. So hopefully those five methods really helped you out today. I know not all those methods are brand new or maybe you've heard them before, but it also is just a really, really good reminder that trading on this game is not that hard. You just have to put in a little bit of time. You have to put in a little bit of effort and find a method that works well for you. Try stuff out. Don't be afraid to try stuff out, guys. I'll say this. We say this a lot. You have to spend coins to make coins. I bought some Enzo Fernandez last night at 34,000 coins. I'm technically making like a thousand coins a card here because you went up a little bit and there's no, there's really like 1,000, 1,500 coins of tax here, but I'm not making much on this card, but I, at least I went for it, right? I bought Kiesis as well at 75K and he went up 10,000 coins. So, you know, some of these trades work out, some of them don't, but it's all about learning from the mistakes, learning from what you do and your coin balance will continue to grow and you'll just keep getting more and more coins on this game. And who doesn't want to have more coins? everybody wants to. So hopefully the video helped you out today, guys. If you did enjoy it, smash the thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe for daily videos on the market, on content, and how to stay ahead on FC24. It's been Nate the Foot Account, and see you guys in another video. Peace. Out.